Hey, all you hot messes. All right. Listen, we are a few months into the school year this year. And uh, let, let's do a little temperature check here. How you doing? With this being the third year of, I don't know. Wait, what has this? What has this past three years been? Does anyone remember what it was like before this little pandemic? I kind of remember what it was like. Rainbows and butterflies and support and love. Just, well, just kidding. There were no butterflies. But when I was a brand new teacher, I went into teaching in a private school, which is probably a whole other topic for a whole other time. And I would love to actually chat about that, the different types of schools that you could teach in and the pros and cons of both. But my first year... It, it was a whole lot of learning. I popped out of school with my degree and that mm, new contract feeling. I, I was feeling like a million dollars when I signed my first contract, even though my contract said that I was about, I don't know, like $980,000 short of a million dollars. I, I thought I knew everything, right? I, I was trained. I was professional. I was a grown up. Every strategy I would implement would be followed with open arms and and just amazingness by my class. They would follow my every instruction. I could literally do no wrong. I was the best thing to ever enter a classroom. And, and more importantly, I was ready. And I could not have been more wrong about anything in my entire life. And I know a lot of you would if we were honest here, felt the same way that I did. If you've been teaching for for decades <laughs> or what feels like decades, there's a lot that you learn within those first couple years of, of getting to know who you are as a teacher. And, and talking about this, you may realize you relate so much to some of these things that I'm going to share today, which is things that I wish I knew my, my first few years of teaching. Or maybe you would have a lot more things to add to this list. I know I could write a book about this, and I would absolutely love to hear them. If you are in your first year this year, or you're going into your second or third, I hope you are encouraged and maybe learn from the mistakes of Miss Smith in 2014 and 2015. The first thing that I wish that I understood or knew about my first few years of teaching is the amount of work that went into creating lesson plans, right? Lesson planning in college is totally different than what I actually did in the classroom. I am not a planner by nature. I, I again, this is, is a, probably a huge shock to some of you because we're on the Hamas Teacher Express. But I, I am more of a type B human, one that just goes with the flow. Listen, things are going to happen. We don't need a plan. It's all good. We'll figure it out. But the amount of times that I was asked for each, like a lesson plan that I completed in college, I, I, I remember making sure in college that I had every box filled in of that lesson plan and a detailed outline for every lesson that I taught in college. It <laughs> took hours to complete one lesson plan for my college classes. And then it took me 20 minutes <laughs> to teach that one lesson, if that. And I don't know what I was thinking writing them for that amount of time and only getting that much teaching content. But the reality is, you don't have time to do that in a real classroom with a real job. My first couple years of teaching, I tried to build every lesson plan with that structure in mind. And it's a good it's a good structure, absolutely, but it just doesn't work in the real world, in the real world. 
I tried to come up with a hook and an opener and a whole detailed lesson plan with an intricate PowerPoint, a closing and some sort of measure for my objective for every single lesson in my self-contained classroom. And I almost died. (laughs) It's just not feasible to be trying to do that for every single thing because there are things throughout the day that just aren't gonna be on the lesson plan. And I wish I had just kept it simple and did the lesson plans that were already created in my curriculum book. I was handed curriculum at the beginning of the year and guess what? They came with lesson plans. I didn't have to create everything from scratch. And I, I wish I had spent more time understanding the content and the curriculum through the lens of the, the people that I was teaching and not trying to be this crazy creative human that was trying to go overboard with all of these different projects for this one single lesson. Like, I, I'm not that person. <laughs> so when the lessons and the things that I spent so much time on flopped or just didn't go over like Pinterest said that they would, it, it was devastating for me. Am I a bad teacher? Am I supposed to be doing this? Why am I so horrible at this? So rather than evaluate the learners, I was devaluing myself as an educator. And this lesson or this type of lesson got me a 98% in that teaching class in college that I was in. So this brings me to my next point. It's the reality of the students in your classroom. It's so easy to write a lesson plan in college for your pretend classes or your class of other hopeful teachers. We learned how to diversify a lesson and we're required to create work for those students. But the reality is your students are so much more than their learning levels. And it it sounds stupid to say out loud, like, Dejas, thanks for this obvious. But it's so different to have those faces and those humans with so many different backgrounds and needs that are just not learn that we're not just learning, but it was also like the physical and emotional needs. And they're in front of you while you're trying to teach a concept. The kids in your classes are so much more than their reading levels or, or math levels. They are full human beings with, with complicated feelings. And, and they're constantly trying to process those feelings and control those feelings while taking on this new information that, they're, that their teacher is giving them and then apply that knowledge and do it all in a room full of their friends and peers or, let's be honest, mortal enemies can, can you imagine? And I wish that I understood the complexity of those students before walking into my first classroom. When I walked into my first classroom, I, I taught fourth grade in that private school. And I was kind of under this impression that every child in that room would want to hear what I would say, you know? They, and not only that, that they would, they would listen to me, right? Oh, you sweet little dummy. There was this one little young man that would not listen to anything that I said or follow my instructions. And this was horrifying to me. I didn't know what to do with him because we didn't talk about this in college. It it was devastating because that's that's just not the way it was supposed to go. This and this was a smart kid. I didn't I didn't have to differentiate anything for him content-wise. So I didn't understand why this kid was so difficult because in college I was trying to differentiate for their learning needs. And in all reality, I feel like I failed this kid as a first year teacher. This child had had emotional needs that I I was not meeting and I, I didn't know how to meet. And I regret that so much because of the the angst and the fights that I had with him. He didn't need me to differentiate the content, but he did need me to be a human who cared about him. And I'm I'm not I'm not saying that I I didn't care about him. It, I was trying to process 
his feelings while he disrespected me, but I didn't know how to do that. It was, it was complicated. And I remember every single student in, in my first class, still to this day, who are actually college freshmen now, which is horrifying. I am old. <laughs> I, I really loved him. I truly did. And he taught me so, so much. But I wish I could go back and tell Miss Smith that it's okay to pick the battles and it's okay to differentiate not just the content like you know how to do, but the way you talk, listen, and communicate with students because there's so much more than, than what's on that paper. The next thing that I that I wish I knew was just kind of the reality of the job. And going into teaching, I definitely glorified what I thought teaching was. Even with my field experience during college classes and student teaching, I, I somehow didn't grasp what teaching was or what my teaching day would entail. I kind of romanticized it in my mind, what I thought teaching was. So I, I kind of touched on this in the last point, but teaching is so much more than the content. It required me to be able to manage so many different things at one time. I, I wasn't just a teacher. So while I was trying to teach my content, which I thought I was going to do with like out of hitch, I was also trying to then answer the phone or, you know, while I was answering the phone, the kids in class were being pulled for testing and then, and then, not being able to finish the stuff that I had in my lesson plan to finish, but, and then these kids are going off the walls. Like there's so much more than, than what was on the lesson plan for me. And the reality of my, of the job that I was doing was that I wasn't just a teacher, okay? I was a manager. I was an actor. I was, a professional organizer, or in my case, hide the messer, decorator, nurse, therapist, and trying to do the thing that I got my degree in too. And if it's a bit of a disappointment or a letdown when you get your teaching job and you realize that it's so much more than teaching, it's okay give it time, take it day by day, it is going to be, it, and it, it might be a disappointment and that's okay. It's, it's okay for something to be a disappointment, especially if you've romanticized it in your brain like I did, but it, it does, it does get better. My next thing that I kind of wish that I handled a little bit better my first year teaching was being choosy with my tribe. And something my mom always told me is that you are who you spend your time with. And I remember as a teenager, teenager rolling my eyes when she told me this. Respectfully, mom, of course, I love you so much. I do. But, but now as an adult, I find that it's absolutely true. We feed off of others' positivity or negativity or their vibes right? I wish I had been more choosy with which people I hung out with at school. And, you know, maybe just wait, if you get a new job at a school, maybe just wait to see the reactions and actions of the people that that are in your school and the staff of your school. Make sure that you're choosy with who you're having lunch with, because there are going to be people that you don't get along with at schools. And I... I was always pretty good at just holding my tongue and letting things slide off my back because I am a lover, not a fighter. I do not do confrontation or arguments. They're, they're never, ever an option for me when it comes to my colleagues. But I wish I knew when I was being bullied by my teacher friends or that it was okay to say things like, I, I, I don't think what you're saying is right, or I don't agree with you, or you're kind of being mean. <laughs> I didn't know that I could say that stuff because I felt like as a new teacher who didn't know anything, I didn't have the, the platform to do that. But the negativity and the bitterness and the judgmental nature of the teachers or 
of one teacher in particular that I was having lunch with uh, affected me. I became a teacher with an attitude and that's that's not me at all. I took on their attitude and outlook and it was not a healthy place for a first year teacher to be in. I wish that I had chosen people who empowered me or didn't shame me into thinking that I had to be working myself like I had been teaching for 20 years or that I should know this stuff that they already know because they had that 20 year experience. I didn't. They weren't teaching me or or guiding me in anything. They were just kind of shaming me. And I also wish that I knew that it was okay to have lunch by myself if I emotionally could not take on the negativity of that teacher that day. This piece of advice also goes towards social media as well. And I am, I know I'm consuming a lot of social media and I'm sure a lot of you are. There's a lot of choices out there. That's the beauty of social media, right? And a lot of messages that we are consuming at all times. So just be careful. And believe me, this is a message to myself as as much as you because this is still super hard to not get sucked into the negativity or sucked into believing that I'm not doing enough. Goodness, I I really love social media, but it's also a, a dangerous thing that I'm consuming a lot of and I could be consuming a lot of negativity and things that are just not good for me personally. The next thing that I wish I knew was that sometimes it's okay to not know stuff. My first year teaching, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that I was a professional, okay? I had my degree and I absolutely knew everything there was to know. And listen, I got some good acting lessons in while I sat in meetings pretending to know every single acronym that that came out of their mouths. It was the whole alphabet in those meetings or uh, ways that I was supposed to act and speak during those meetings. <laughs> why? why? I, I wish I knew that it was okay to ask questions about what things meant or what my role was in meetings before going to those meetings. I also wish I knew that I am. Sometimes my students want advocate and if they need some sort of accommodation or if I saw things that were concerning, I was allowed to say things or ask for those things in those meetings. The amount of times that I looked at a student, saw their needs and was like, I, 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 can, I can fix this and didn't really say anything to the team that was built around me because I didn't, I didn't know that I could say those things or I didn't. I didn't realize that that was also part of my job. I I thought that it was my job to fix them all by myself and and you just you just can't. And I I kind of felt such shame in not knowing things in those meetings that I I didn't say anything or stand up for my students. Ugh. Ugh, that makes me so <laughs> that makes me filled with regret. But if you, as a new teacher, you you do know stuff, but there's so much that's not taught in college, it's okay to hold your teaching degree in your hand and say, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> yay. And be okay with asking for help or support. Ask to observe other teachers or, or have admin come in or other experienced teachers that you feel comfortable with to come in and observe you. Thankfully, we are, we're really quick learners and are very adoptable, right? But there should also be grace given to you in that time of learning. The next thing that you should, or that I wish that I knew was that I can set boundaries. When you're a first year teacher or a new, newer teacher, there's such an exciting thing about finally having your teaching degree and your very own classroom to do the thing that you wanted to do forever. And, and you just want to do all of the things and be all of the things to all of the people in the school you're trying to now impress. You've got admin that you don't want to let down and, and other teachers you want to impress. And then there's the parents you want to assure that even though you're young, their children are in the hands of a capable professional teacher 
and and then and then there's the real life classroom full of students who you are trying to balance being an authority figure but also build relationships it's it's a lot to balance and and once again things that were not talked about or taught in college these are a lot of things to balance and try to also figure out your new role in your very own classroom and and something that i wish that i had known as a first year teacher is that it's absolutely essential to set boundaries with everything. Setting boundaries with the hours you're keeping at school and doing schoolwork is necessary to every teacher, but especially to a new teacher. And I wish that someone had told me you don't have to answer every email right away. I wish someone had told me that you're not going to be able to please everyone all the time. And, and also, while we're on this setting up boundaries or rules for yourself, I also wish someone had told me that it's normal to not grade every single piece of work you hand out. It's not all of it has to go in the grade book. Not all of it has to have a pen on it from you. Mm -mm. You can recycle some of it. We've all heard this piece of advice before, okay? Setting boundaries might trigger some of you as this like self-care help tool. Like, no. Setting boundaries is so much more than the, like leave at your contracted time and, and then set your phone on do not disturb or don't put your school email on your phone. It's also setting boundaries emotionally. I wish someone had told me that I can't fix everything and that it's very tiring trying to do that day after day by yourself. And I, I wish someone had told me that you, you will disappoint people and that not everyone is going to like you. If someone had told me that though, I may have melted into an emotional mess because I thought I could make everyone like me and that I could make everyone happy all the time because I'm Miss Smith, I'm Jess, you have to like me. And setting boundaries in all of the ways is important and knowing yourself for when you need to take a break take a walk, or just take a breath. And looking back now, those first few years of teaching are some that are like, wow, I cannot believe I did that. I can't believe someone gave me a classroom at the age of 24 to take over. I, how, like I was a professional. <laughs> and as someone who is a 30 something who still feels 22, I, I can't believe that someone trusted me to take care of children's education. I, I was absolutely perfectly qualified to, but I, I just, I needed some experience. So give yourself time and grace and understanding to be your first year teacher self. Get to know who you are as a teacher, what's important to you. Because what's important to you as a teacher is not going to always be important to the person you're teaching next to or the person that you see on social media. Who, who are you as a teacher? Take time to get to know yourself in your classroom. Soak in all of those experiences and, and also ask questions. Your first year teacher self is not going to be the same as your 10 year teacher self. And that is a very beautiful and wonderful thing. And that's kind of actually the beauty about being a teacher. It's kind, kind of like every day, every year is different and a chance to learn something new from the new group that you have with you. So in a sense, we're all kind of first year teachers, huh? That's kind of fun, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for being aboard the Hot Mess Teacher Express today, and I will see you next week.